film noir is a term that is often used to describe stylized crime dramas, particularly ones with cynical motivations and attitudes. Many of these films came out during the 1940s and the 1950s, which has garnered it the title of the classic period. Often these films are in black and white, drenched in shadow, with a hard-boiled detective at the center, surrounded by distrustful characters with hidden agendas. Before we begin, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Every new sub helps us achieve our goal and keeps us motivated to create new content. With that being said, I'm your host, Jamie, and here are 10 great noir films. Number 1. Chinatown There's some debate to the historical aspect around this film, as there are issues that were going on in the 1920s and 1930s especially with water and the artificial drought that was around in the earlier 1900s. Many critics have loved this film, even putting it at number two for the top 10 mysteries of all time. Given the storyline and how well it's put together, I have to agree. So we're going to dive in. It takes place in LA in 1937, and we quickly meet Evelyn, played by Faye Dunaway and JJ, played by Jack Nicholson. Evelyn is hiring a private detector to find out who her husband's mistress is. This seems like a typical case at first. Find out everything there is about the husband. Well, that's when things start to really change. JJ's old partner is found dead. There's an imposter, Evelyn. JJ is getting his ass kicked every which way finding out about the water projects and problems. I can't spoil too much of this film. It is so worth a watch. And yes, this film did come out in 1974, but it's a timeless film. And Roman Polanski did a great job, especially with this being his final film he directed in the US. And Robert Town has amazing writing capabilities even bringing light to the California water war. There's a lot of depth to the characters and stories. It really adds that connection to them. I think you will love this film, so check it out over on Pluto, Paramount+, Plus, Roku, Prime, Google Play, Apple TV, or Fandango. Number two, The Long Goodbye. Based on the novel of the same name by Raymond Chandler, we are presented with this story of a moral man having to deal with immoral people. Quite a few scandals in this film from the affairs, murder, and everything in between. We start off seeing Marlo come back from a late night trip to the grocery store to find his friend Terry begging him to take him to Mexico. Marlo does agree, but questions him due to the state he's in, both mentally and physically. After Marlo returns, he learns that Terry is a suspect for killing his wife, Sylvia. Then Eileen hires him to find her husband, and in return, he ends up learning that Terry and Eileen know each other, which opens a can of worms. Eventually, Marlo is face to face with a gangster who is wanting his money, and then the truth begins to unfold, which you have to see for yourself. The things Marlo goes through in this film is just insane and he's put in the middle of all this learning the dark secrets his friend has and then what other people are capable of it's an intense ride and one that does deserve attention but let me know if you see Arnold Schwarzenegger anywhere I'm curious to see if you'll find him so head over to Tubi, Pluto, MGM Plus, Sling TV, Roku, Prime, Philo, Fandango, or Apple TV to enjoy this masterpiece. Number three, The Killing. Directed by and co-written by Stanley Kubrick and Jim Thompson, we have this adaptation from the novel Clean Break by Lionel White. Typically, we're used to bank robberies, and that all becomes predictable. But what if it took place during the biggest horse race of the year? That's exactly where this heist goes down, and I'll say, it's damn good. Johnny is a longtime running criminal and plans one last heist 
with the help of a sharpshooter, window teller, wrestler, bartender, and a corrupt cop. Most of this follows Johnny and George, the window teller, as they navigate the whole plan, from getting everybody together, planning to execution. George is planning on making his wife very happy by becoming rich, but she enlists her affair partner to rob George and the rest of them. There are a lot of deaths between characters, mostly from the affair partner. And this isn't one of those, the good guy wins or gets the girl. The ending is different. It threw me for a loop when I first saw it, but it's good. This film even inspired Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs, which makes sense when you take the two directors' approaches to things like this. But, if you feel like joining the millions in this cult classic, head over to Tubi, Pluto, MGM+, Sling TV, Roku, Prime, Bello, Google Play, Apple TV, or Fandango. Number 4. Sunset Boulevard in 1989, this film was among several others for the first round of picks for the National Film Registry and has since landed itself at number 16 in the top 100 films of the 20th century. It even won three Academy Awards when it first released. Critics praise this film, claiming it to be the best story of Hollywood at its worst. However, during the initial screening of the film, there was a lot of controversy, and director Billy Wilde was cited for saying some pretty vulgar things to the viewers. But let's take a look at this film. We start off with the homicide department coming to a large mansion of an older actress who wants to be on the big screen again. There has been a murder, and as we take a look back at the previous six months, we'll find a twisted story of nobodies against the big shots and has-beens. Joe is a screenwriter who is trying to make it. Unfortunately, the project he has isn't that great, and Betty criticizes him harshly. So Joe, who's also on the run from Repo Men, drives onto the property of a silent film star, Norma. He proceeds to help her with the script she has, and she falls in love with him, but he doesn't reciprocate. Later, she harms herself and the two begin having a sexual relationship. Talk about manipulation. It further goes on to explain that the butler is writing all of her fan mail and she doesn't believe she isn't relevant anymore. I sometimes wondered if there was like some kind of delusion she had, but at the time mental health was not talked about, nor did you seek out any kind of treatment for it. It's really interesting how the whole story plays out, and I think you'll love it. So take a peek over on Pluto, Sling TV, Prime, Google Play, Fandango, or Apple TV. Number five, The Big Heat. Receiving high praises from critics and audiences alike, we have to take a look at this film. We follow Dave, who's a homicide detective, who's called in to investigate the death of a corrupt cop. His wife hides some details that are supposed to go to the DA, and the cop's mistress ends up getting involved. So Lucy, the mistress, tells Dave the cop wasn't harmed at his own hands. Instead, there's somebody behind it all. This is when Dave learns of the relationship the cop had with the mob in the area. Dave starts getting calls, threatening him and his family, and even though he disregards it, his wife ends up dying due to an explosion. That's when Dave is taken off the case, but still investigating the death of the cop. And then he meets Debbie. On the night they meet, she's getting burned by the second in command of the mob, and Dave comes to her rescue. Then everything just kind of unravels from there. It's similar to a cat and mouse kind of game, yet who done it? theme mixed with mobsters, corrupt cops, and some pretty intense violence. It really leaves you stunned, and the acting along with the score is just brilliant. A timeless classic that needs to be enjoyed by everybody. 
it has a little something for everybody as well. So head over to Prime, Google Play, Apple TV, or Fandango to give this one a go. You won't regret it. Number six, the Maltese Falcon. Private investigators Sam Spade and Miles Archer are commissioned to find the sister of a new client when Archer is suddenly murdered that night. Spade is interrogated at his apartment and police let him be. The next day, Spade meets with the client from the night before and she tells him he needs to investigate the murder. Later, a man shows up hiring him to find the Maltese Falcon which is this golden falcon that's encrusted with rare jewels. It's supposed to be really beautiful. But Spade doesn't believe this guy. And ultimately, he's hired anyway. So Spade meets with his two clients who obviously know each other, and things start to make sense. Upon meeting the kingpin of the group, Spade passes out and still has to find this mysterious falcon. That's when things turn take a turn for the worst. Spade wants somebody to take the fall for the murders, in which they do come up with a plan, but even that's short-lived. In the part where the kinpin finally gets the falcon, they find it to be a fake and head off to Istanbul. There's this whole film about this statue, so let me tell you. There is this legend of a golden falcon sent to Charles V from the Knight Templars of Malta. However, it was stolen by pirates and never found again. Having a film ha that has a lost object like this piqued my interest, and I had to go down that rabbit hole. But take some time for yourself to check out this treasure over on Tubi, Prime, Google Play, Fandango, or Apple TV. Number 7. The Big Sleep this film was actually produced in 1944, but was delayed in releasing due to Warner Brothers wanting to only release war-related movies at the time, in anticipation for World War II to end. There is even a remastered edition that was originally shown to troops overseas, and greatly shows the difference of a film before and after a war. Production was also slowed due to Humphrey Bogart's, who plays Philip Marlowe drinking, which left him unable to work on various occasions. Writing was even a bit different for this film due to the executives wanting to get rid of the sexual themes. However, this film is great and I can see why. We follow Marlowe, a private detective who gets hired by General Sternwood, who needs to settle some debts to a bookstore for his youngest daughter. However, Sternwood's oldest daughter thinks he wants to find his son, Reagan, who went missing a month prior. Nothing is as easy as it seems, and Marlo soon finds this out. While Marlo is looking for Carmen, he ends up entwined with some gangsters, ultimately leading from blackmail to murder. You're left questioning why Sternwood's youngest daughter was indebted to the bookstore why the bookkeeper is murdered, and everything else. Considering this film was made in the 1940s, it's still a classic and does currently hold a spot with the National Film Registry. So do yourself a favor and get yourself acquainted with this classic over on Google Play, Fandango, Apple TV, or Prime. Hey folks, sorry to interrupt, but we just launched our very own merch store at fatninja.shop. Uh, we sell everything from t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, and more, so we would greatly appreciate it if you checked it out. All the proceeds go to our future projects, so uh, it helps us make any kind of you know, movies and, and short films that we want to make in the future. So, um, if you got time, check out FatNinja.shop. Uh, thanks again, and uh, back to the video. Number 8, Double Indemnity. Billy Wilder delivered many films in this category, and I will say, he did a fantastic job, especially given the constraints with the case code. So much was censored back in the 40s, and if it were to have been released in this day and age, I think it would be missing that essence that makes this film what it really is. Even the ending had to be completely edited, considering, at the time, 
anything that remotely resembled self-destruction, it could not be in the film. Anyway, in this one, we follow an insurance salesman named Walter Neff. And at the beginning, he comes into his office with this horrible wound and starts writing out his confession. Well, the year prior, he met Phyllis, who was curious about a life insurance policy on her husband. And even though he distances himself from that, he ends up helping her commit some heinous crimes. Neff's boss gets wind of the situation and decides not to pay out the policy, which then causes Lola, Phyllis's stepdaughter, to fear for her life. And now we're in a situation where there's this whole family drama or scandal going on. This one is intense and had me at the edge of my seat. I just had to know how it played out. And you should see this in all its glory over on Apple TV, Fandango, Google Play, or Prime. Number nine, The Naked City. This film was completely shot on scene. Everything you see is what was really in New York at the time, which makes this one kind of unique for back then. It was even readapted into two TV movies which aired on Showtime back in 1998 and has a lot of praise from critics as well as some critiques. We start off with the accidental death of a famous model named Jean Dexter, who then is found in the East River. Enter our detectives who see that this accidental death is actually a murder and now a case of whodunit. First they suspect her ex-boyfriend Frank, who denies anything and everything. Then we meet Ruth, Frank's fiance. Frank is a prime suspect as he lied through everything. However, his alibi is pretty tight, so it can't be him. Then we're learning about Jean's socialite daughter, Ruth, and how things seem to go missing from Jean and Ruth's properties. Once Ruth realizes about Frank being the ultimate asshole, her slap to his face is quite hilarious. It really does become a huge case of who did what. Even the police chase through the east side of Manhattan was well shot. This was one of those movies that I went into thinking it was just going to be like every other m murder movie there was, but was very pleased with the outcome. So if you haven't seen it yet, I recommend you do so at your earliest convenience over on Tubi, Plex, Max, Prime, or Apple TV. Number 10, Blood Simple. The 80s were definitely a distinct decade from music to style, even films. And this one doesn't disappoint on the 80s uniqueness. The title, once you learn the meaning, fits the film to a T. Blood Simple is a way to describe a person's mindset once it enters survival mode when consistently in a violent environment. Even though the film did okay at the box office, it has a lot of crit critic praises. One of the things that makes it so different is that it's blended between genres that normally don't go together. But how it's worked is flawless, unlike the crimes committed in this one. We follow Ray and Abby as they realize their feelings towards each other. But here's the problem. Abby is Ray's boss's wife. Once Marty, the husband, realizes the two are having an affair, he sends a private detective to get proof of her infidelity and now wants to end his wife. Well, the so-called private detective, named Visor, tries to kidnap Abby, fails, then is paid to try to kill the pair. However, the two are not killed at the moment and Visor offers Marty some doctored fo photos of a staged homicide. This pleases Marty but Visor, not so happy, and shoots Marty. This then gets Ray involved, and just the downward spiral for the rest of the film is one that needs to be experienced. So take a shot and check this out over on Max, Prime, Fandango, Google Play, or Apple TV.
Thanks for checking out the video. Did we leave any films off the list? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to tap that bell icon to stay up to date with our latest releases. You can reach out to us on Twitter or X at Studios Fat or chat with us on Discord. Links below. Make sure to check out our very own merch store located at fatninja.shop. All proceeds go towards our next film project, so we'd greatly appreciate it. I've been your host, Jamie. Thanks again. See you in the next one.